Ladies and gentlemen, the bare-faced big twin two used as a PA speaker. Now, I've had this for about, uh, I was surprised. I looked at my video where I went to visit Barefaced in Brighton, and I got the Big Twin 2 shortly after that. I'm surprised to see that YouTube says four years. I'm not doubting them. I'm just quite surprised. So I'm, I'm guessing they're right. I think I'd rather trust them than me when it comes to dates and the past and stuff. So there we are. And this is a full review of it. Um, me using it over those four years. What I required then was uh, something which would quite simply take everything that I use. I do various things like most of us. I do some things where I play piano, and when I play piano, I like my bass, clean bass. But I like my bass, the position of bass in the music I like. So often I'll uh, split the piano, bass left hand, piano uh, or electric piano in the right hand and then sing so I wanted something that would reproduce all that and I like my quality I was using I have used in the past Bose 802s you know with the curved front and the two I like the Bose 802s however you need an equalizer with them and really to drive them you need a pretty monster power amp so I've got all that in a rack in a rack. <laughs> it's a bit big. It's heavy. I don't mind. I'm not feeble yet. It's coming along, but not yet. But a bit too much. And also, uh, the very lows weren't there. Then I started using ohm speakers. I don't know if you know them. Look a bit like the Bose, actually, but without the, the ports on the front. They've got a slit down the bottom. I was using those. Those, those weren't okay uh but every now and then with the left hand of the bass piano i'd hear cuck, cuck, cuck. so i'm thinking oh they don't like it the speakers hitting the other not designed for that really i've used all sorts of things or pretty much always something i'm thinking missing and i think is it that difficult really so i was looking around for something and then i got into valve amps as well so i wanted something i could use my valve amps with so i'm not asking that much i didn't think well, the speaker cabinet will handle everything. We'll mate to a, a valve amp, which isn't a particular problem uh, for most of them because they're either four, mostly four ohms if you're just using one speaker. Hmm. So um, that's what I wanted. So I was looking around. Now, why on earth I came across barefaced? I don't know. I think it must have been... I read bass and guitar and all sorts of reviews. It must have been in the Bass Magazine review. And then I went to their website uh-huh their website is uh very good hopefully this is on screen so you can see the image of the cab you can see what he says a lot about plays stupid loud bear in mind i didn't need stupid loud uh that wasn't really a concern loud enough the kind of volume levels i'm playing at i didn't want the, the bass speakers it bottoming out or cracking out at uh, with any low end but the, I don't play with this huge venue so that wasn't really an issue um, what else it says it says uh, the compression driver incredible dispersion and clarity dispersion and clarity I needed because I'm just gonna have one speaker the crossover thing didn't need because it's gonna uh, being able to, to uh, reduce the tweeter because I'm gonna have it flat the whole way through it's so sensitive you can gig with a 100 watt amp that was significant for me. It'll handle 1,600 watt amps without complaint. Really. I'm not doubting him, but that's way beyond anything I'm going to be doing. Louder and punchier. Is there anything else? There's something I'm trying to see which I can't find, and I couldn't find before. And then I did find it, and it's gone. Maybe you can see it. I don't think it's there. But anyway, well, all right, uh, 30 to 20 kilohertz. Sounds good to me. Um, four ohms. That's important to me. And it said somewhere that it's really like a big studio monitor. That must have been the thing that swung it for me, because that's exactly what I was looking for. A hi-fi speaker that can handle everything without complaint. And this is movable. So, that was very interesting to me. So down I went to, to Barefaced, and I had a little look. 
You can see the video. And I tried it out. I took my MP3 player. I took my bass. I took a mic. I took my valve amp. I did the thing properly. He was very generous. He played the bass a bit as well, as you'll see, if you look at it. With his time, I looked at it around, around the factory and uh, decided to buy it. There is another option. And that other option is uh, Big Baby. And as you can see, it's uh, like the Big Twin, but with only one 12-inch driver. Well, it doesn't say it here from what I can see. Maybe it's changed since then, but it did seem to be that it couldn't handle quite the base of the one with the two 12s. But I'm sure it does very well. But the issue for me was one, it says it's so sensitive you can gig with a 150 watt amp. Now, the other one said 100 watts. I don't know how much difference these kind of things make because I'm operating on less than that, way less than that most of the time anyway. So I figured the more sensitive one is probably going to be more suitable for the kind of things I'm doing. Uh, have we got... I can't see it. I'm looking for the frequency response. Oh, 30 to 20 again. The other issue is that the big baby is 8 ohms. Now with the valve amps, valve amps like to see less rather than higher. So the uh, Fender PA100 would like to see 4 ohms or 2 8 ohms down to 4. Just using one I'll be running it at double in the wrong direction. They're pretty tough. I think it could handle it. Rather more importantly was that the Fender 160 PS, which I love to use, monster thing, it was designed with its own speaker cabinets and it, it wants to see 2.6, 5.3, I've got the wrong, 2.6, ohms. So it wants to see 2.7 ohms. At the moment, with the big twin two, it's seeing four ohms less than double. Those tough old fenders can handle less than double in the wrong direction, I'm sure, and as I proved for myself. The output transformer hasn't blown up, so. However, running it into eight ohms, when it wants to see 2.6, it's in the wrong direction. So all in all, I went for the big twin. So I think it's time to have a little look around it uh, I've done a video down at my friend's place, just so you can see. And I'm going to point out uh, an aspect of its sound, which I've noticed is obvious when it's not plugged in. Everything is going to have resonance or resonant frequencies or a mixture of them. Almost everything. For those of you who haven't seen the Bareface Big Twin 2, this is the back. One grab handle on the top there, one on either side. This is a high frequency roll off. That's fully on. And that's uh, off, so the tweeter, the horn isn't engaged at all. But because I sing through it, of course, I leave it fully on. Two speak ons with jack centers. So I use a right angle jack switchcraft, I think that is. And it just about fits in that it doesn't foul the recess well. Doesn't really. And I leave it tucked in down the side there, with, even when the cover's on, just so I don't uh, forget it. You can see around the front, got the port here. Wow, I need to clean it, blimey. Sorry about that. And uh, the fatal horn in there and the two magnificent 12s. 1600 watts, so yeah, I do need to dust that. Um, all quite thin, as you can see. I'll take it inside the sound of it. It's braced. Well, I was gonna say heavily, but it's light, but um, significantly. I think he uses a CNC machine to do that. I do notice that when I drag it, roll it, there's some wheels at the back there, so you tilt it and you can pull it along. It's quite light anyway. 
the berries. Don't know if you can hear. Something down there. There, can you hear it? And I do notice that in the sound. Bound to. Everything's bound to have a... I mean, you can make it out of granite like those megaliths, but uh, has got a sound to it. Uh, and I notice that slight thickening in that region, which I'm sure Alex has taken into account. And bear in mind that I'm using it for very low watts. It's meant 1,600 watts it can handle. And I'm using it at a very low volume level for what it's designed for. Going back to the days when I was reading about hi-fi speakers, what can you do about this resonance? You can look it up yourself, and I think uh, Alex says a lot on the website. Obviously, you're putting something in a box that's vibrating like this, and it's sending sound waves back and forth. It's going to shake everything. Well, mus. Mus. You could make the thing massive. You could make it out of megalithic granite blocks. Look at these beauties. These are photos, I think, from uh, the stone walls in Peru. Each of those blocks is 25 to 200 tons. The quarry, they seem to think, was five miles away over a few mountains. And some of them, I don't think any in these pictures, but some of them are 11 sided and they fit immaculately. And the shape of them means they can withstand earthquakes. Hmm. Only trouble is, I don't think if they made it out of those that I'd be able to take it down the Dug and Dock, or even the Duck and Dog, or any number, number, number of pubs beginning with D and D. Got a list of things here which I noticed immediately on using it. I'm just going to run through them, and then I'll give you some samples of me uh, using it. So some of the things I noticed was unflustered, as if it could handle anything. That's the feeling I get from it. Whatever I plug in, I'm not bothered. Whatever I plug in feels like it's going to be able to have, however low I want to go. Anything just seems it can handle it. Don't hear any distortion, any problem whatsoever. It seems to be unfl unflustered. Base authority without bluster. Sometimes, you know, with high-end equipment, the first thing you notice is what's missing rather than then you get to appreciate what's there. So if you haven't got an accentuated top end, you haven't got lots of... Sometimes it's almost a little bit disappointing. The Warren rattle. The Warren is a gig hall where they have gigs. And I was doing some wedding or something and I was split bass with piano. There and there. Bare faced and voice. And I was just testing things out because I had the new Fender 160 PS. was new to me at that time because it was an old amp. And at one stage, I heard a rattle. I'm thinking, what's that? I was looking around. So I played, it was on one of the bass notes, I played it again. And then I realised that the rattle was something at the far end of the room. So what that makes me think is that it took me a while to notice because there wasn't a lot of blue, bloom and boom to make me think, oh, it must be something here. It's like it's so clean that it just rolls the wave out and would rattle something at the far end of the room. But I, I'd be wondering, how on earth is that happening? Because we're well, not that loud. I think it's because it goes low and it stays clean. So that was quite a, an insight to me. If we look at some of the videos, I've got even oh, evenness and manners. It just seems to be well-mannered and even. <laughs> um, gentle onset of feedback with a microphone. When feedback starts, it starts gently and grows. So to me, that suggests that there aren't any spikes in the high frequencies. A lot of horns, they're very rough in their frequency response. So a few frequencies are, are louder than everything else. So when you start to turn things up, those loud frequencies start to cause a problem, whereas everything else is really could go a fair bit higher. But those peaks tend to 
cause of feedback and then the next peak. Whereas things are quite smooth and flat, everything can go up and they might obviously can't get completely flat and then you just gently start to get feedback coming on. You can just turn the mic slightly and it goes and then go and turn yourself down or do what you need to do. So I noticed that as well. If you listen to the videos, you wouldn't know maybe, but um, I noticed that the tone of my bass guitar came through. I had on one of them, the video in the pub, I had a single coil bass guitar compared to um, the humbucker, both GNLs which I use. On the Fender bass, dedicated bass amp, which I'd been using, the difference didn't really show that much. They both sounded like basses. It's a Fender Rumble 200. Both sounded like with a 50 inch a horn. Both sounded like basses but they sounded kind of much the same. Nice enough bass sound, I was happy with it. But when I put it through this, I noticed the tone of the GNL. So, so, well, on the single coil in the settings, I had it slightly putting the old school thing, which is the idea of the single coil of the SB, SBJB2. It's the idea of it, whereas the humbuck is a completely different sound. So that was accentuated, or rather revealed more. Party experience. Well... A friend of mine were having a party, and I thought, let me take my rig down there, because I like to dance and have some music. So I took the MP3 player, took the Fender 160PS and the barefaced, and had the thing running all day, mostly at a low level. And then in the evening, the detached house, I had the chance to crank it as much as I've ever cranked it. Not 1,600, 1,600 watts, so, you know. but I, the meters on the Fender 160 for the first time, I saw them moving, started to distort when I cranked, when I really gave it some. And I felt the trouser flapping experience coming from the uh, from the bare face. So I, this is near as I've got to cranking it, which is nowhere near the uh, 1600 watts. But anyway, so bear that in mind, actually. I doubt it's going to be a problem. I think it'll only get better. On the videos, then, we've got uh, one inside in the pub. You'll see which one that is. It's inside. The next one, I'm outside. So one inside is voice, keyboards, GNL bass going through everything going through the barefaced. I'll put the clip in where I forget to switch the mic on so you hear a little bit of acoustic voice and then I switch it on and then you'll hear the voice coming through. Bear in mind some of the acoustic voice will be on the recorder anyway because it was over there somewhere but not a lot and so you can hear that to me my voice doesn't change that much it just sort of gets a a bit bigger. I notice the tails in the reverb and when I use uh, the echo, they're nicely uh, revealed, quite fine stuff. And it comes through very well. Then another clip of, you'll see that I'm outside with a lovely flugel player, flugel horn player whose name I can't remember, I'll try and find out. Very clean sound because it's outside there. I'm on piano with split bass and you'll hear that. And I'm using a the Biodynamic M88. The inside one is uh, Earthworks SR. 314 and I can hear the difference between the mics quite clearly. I can recognize the bare biodynamic slight, slightly rocky push, broadband push at the top. I recognize that through the recording. Recordings on the Tascam 100 Mark III or something. Tascam recorder, good recorder. So notice that. And then finally, I'll put a clip at the end of a uh, me playing an mp3 through the system in this small kitchen which must be at something like half a watt maybe a watt I've got no idea but it's got to be very 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 low and even at that it's uh I think it does all right considering <laughs> Sugar sweet, so is she. Bye bye, Blackbird. Someday, when I'm awfully low, when the world is cold, I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look.
But it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl You see, man, think about Little baby girls and boys Man, make them happy Cause man, make them toys Well, if you're anything like me, you've had enough already. But I'm not finished yet. The cat's having his tea, and the neighbour is saying his prayers. So all's well. I'm going to talk about the sound in my experience over the four years. The bass, to me, is extended and clean. I like that I can uh, hear the tone of the bass. The mids, talking mostly about voice, which is very revealing. I would say at the volume levels I'm using it at, that slight um, resonance comes across on my voice any, anyway as just a little bit of muscularity, shall I say. I've been listening back and listening back. It's difficult to say, but I think there's a little uh, mus extra muscularity, which I think might be the roundabout that frequency. Up to the top, I don't notice any suck outs. Got the crossover. The top seems extended enough to me for my ears, which are not as young as they were. And everything, and it's sweet, the top. I, the drivers, I'm going to put some pictures up. I think is the, the, they're very proud of their driver, the, the sheer excursion, along with everything else, dispersion, a lot of stuff to take into a mix. One of the big things is that the cone is able to move a long way. Of course, I'm not using that because I don't go that loud. 
This is silly. But I, I like that the cone is paper. I like paper cones. I like that it's wood. Um, I don't mind Beckstring cones from the 70s. You can hear a little bit of plasticky stuff going on. They're coated. And metal cones, not for me. Paper, I, I like. It's wood. And it's very clever stuff. You can, look, you can check this out. It's at the length of the fibres. So I think they use long fibre paper for base. But you can mix it with along the cone with shorter fibres to give some flexibility, some cone breakup, all sorts of fascinating stuff. So paper seems to be, well, you know, still being used by a lot of speaker manufacturers in 2019. It's been around since when? So it's got to, it's got to say something, isn't it? So I like that the cones are, are wood, paper. Near dimming magnets on those. Uh, the treble horn driver, I believe is fatal. Check all this out. The website's got loads of stuff. And I believe it has a polymer cone. Sounds like it has to me. I don't know if it's a cone, whatever it is, that dries before the horn diaphragm. So, my favourite trebles, um, from what I've heard, are uh, silk dome tweeters, which they have in hi-fi. Beautifully sweet and extended. Trouble with them is they can't take the power. So you go to horn drivers. What I didn't like about horn drivers is often have a metal diaphragm and I don't like the metal, me personally. And some of them are very ragged, so you get feedback or edgy ch -ch 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 stuff coming out. And it's, don't like it. I like that the cabinet is wood. The thing I play is wood. Well, apart from the piano, electric piano, a few other things, and the microphone. But anyway, yeah, I like, I like wood. So what about its looks? Well, it's not exactly big. Bear in mind, I'm kind of a bit of a 1970s guy with some 4x12 stacks and stuff. So this isn't big. It's actually quite small. But the way things have gone with a lot of people, it might look a bit big. That doesn't bother me. It's easy. It's light. It's easy to carry. Carry it in one hand easily. But in the venues I'm working on in, sometimes I feel bringing something like that in is a bit... But I'll put you some photographs. I've been using it in pubs with duos. And actually, when I look at the photographs and you can see in the video, I don't think it looks all that threatening. So, and I don't think it'd be any smaller. You know, you, there's limits to things. The handles, I did ask Alex when I was buying one whether I could have leather handles and you know, sort of fancy stuff. But it's there because of where the bracing is and so on and so forth, it's, it's all worked out. It's not that easy. Not simply just screwing another handle in. So there's a reason why he's using that. When I look at the handles and I look at the old fender handles and the fender on the amps, the corner protectors, and I've noticed on the newer fenders, I only have to look at them really and I can see, <laughs> never mind handle them, I can see well, they're not quite the same as they were. Uh, I like those, they're just quality. I don't think the fender wasn't like over the top quality, it's serious stuff. So the, those, the corner protects and stuff, I can look at those and think they look quite thin and all the rest of it, and maybe classier ones would be nice. Um, but I'm talking as a PA, of course, and it's um, it's probably going to spend its life on rock gigs and sort of stadia and stuff. So uh, I'm just talking about as a PA. The finish, that's fine. I think I asked when I had mine whether I could have the Tolex finish. And I believe, Alex said, I don't know if it's still the case, that because there is made out of light and thin um, plywood, which is braced to stop it uh, vibrating, that the, the folds were too tight for Tolex on a particular model I've got. Some of them do have Tolex. He offers that on some. So there you go. So really, I'm using it as a PA. It's fine. It sits in the back. It's black. But more importantly, it sounds great. I'm drawing to a close now because we're all asleep. And uh, the feeling I get from it all, from looking at the website, reading the stuff, using it for some time, it feels like there's, it's, there's thorough knowledge, research, and finally, application. 
to me, doesn't really have a sound, which means if you're the person that sorts your sound out in your head, in terms of the music where you deliver, and then you sort it out in your fingers and your strings and your bass, yeah. If you've got your sound sorted and anything else, voice, all the rest of it, then what do you want? You just want an amplifier to amplify that wave and then something that brings it into existence from an electric signal. If the cabinet is part of your sound, then this might not be for you. So really, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, a big studio monitor. Get your sound, if you get your sound sorted, I'll tell you what to do. But if you get your sound sorted beforehand, then you can rely on this. It seems to me just to, you can just throw everything at this. And there it will be. Now, I have my posh mic. going into my processor. I have my posh bass. My man has his posh keyboard. All of that poshness goes into a posh, hand-wired valve PA. And out of the back of that comes this. All that poshness comes down to this. I can't feel it. Can't hear it. Can't smell it. And I'm not even going to attempt to taste it. What I need is for that culmination of poshness to be brought into existence with power and glory. What am I going to plug it into? Nope. Yeah. El Manifestante.